be talking about a woman whose life is going to blow you away. Now, this class is going to last 12 minutes today. And here we go. Oh my God, have mercy. Now, today we are talking about Saraunia Mangu. Saraunia Mangu. Now, those of you who speak Hausa, Saraunia will not be a big term for you. Saraunia simply means a female chief. Or better still, a queen. Saraunia Mangu is who we are talking about today. Saraunia is spelled S A R R A O U N I A. I spell it again S A R R A O U. Yes, I'm going to take it again. Make sure you get it this time round. S A R R A O U N I A. Saraunia Mangu. Saraunia Mangu. Mangu is spelled M A N. G O U M A N G O U Saraunia Mangu. Hey, 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 hey. Saraunia Mangu was born circa. And listen with rapt attention. Circa 1860. Circa 1860. Circa 1860. In other words, we do not know exactly when she was born. And in his story, we just say circa, just around. You know, circa is from the word circle. You understand? Just around. And you know, the circle is a round object, right? So just around 1860. Just around 1860. That was when she was born. And she was born in a place known as Lugu. L-O-U-G-O-U. -O -U. Lugu in present day Niger. Now today, Lugu has a population of about um, just a couple of um, um, thousands. Yes, it's not that big, as big as it was in those days. My brother, my sister, today we are looking at this great black woman by name Saronia Mangu. Now Lugu is a town in Niger today. In fact, it's a very beautiful town and I love Lugu. Now, Lugu is traditionally very powerful. Lugu is a town that has its indigents loving it so much and keeping to the culture. Now, Lugu, by the 15th of February 2002, had a population of only 8,261. 8,261. That was in the 2002 um, census. My brother, my sister, Lugu, L O U G O U, is located in present day Niger. In fact, in those days, it was a huge, beautiful kingdom made up of tens of thousands of people, and they were Islamized. In other words, Islam was their religion, but not their original religion. They belong to a certain religion called animism. Some people will call it paganism. We don't like the word paganism. We prefer to go by the title African religion. Yes, African religion. Better still, African traditional religion. <laughs> Some people call them the animists. My brother, my sister. Hear me now. Saronia Magu was born circa 1860 in Lugu. Now, Lugu is a small town right now in Niger, made up of less than 10,000 people by the 2002 um, census. Now, the population is well over 10,000 people. Lugu was. Uh, a town, in fact, a kingdom in the days of our heroine today, Saronia Mangu. It was a beautiful kingdom, not so large, but it was huge in its own capacity. And it was involved in trade, but most of it was all about religion, traditional African religion. Hear me now. Now, the Muslims went into that area took over the area and Islamized the people long before our heroine was born. So she grew up in the African traditional religion and also in Islam. Her parents were both Muslims, but when she was growing up, she lost interest in Islam and decided that she was going to be an animist. 
So she worshiped the gods, the rivers, the trees, and even the air that we breathe. Hey! When she was growing up, she was so respectful. She served every old man and old woman she saw. And because she did that, a lot of them invited them into their shrines and homes and taught her deep secrets and even gave her some juju. My brother, my sister, they gave her powers. By the time she was already 20 years, she was able to fly with no wings. In fact, she would just spread her arms and people would see her floating in the air. By the time she was 20 years, she developed yellow eyes. In fact, her eyes were totally yellow. Yellow, yellow eyes she developed. We are talking about Saronia Mangu. Hi! Now, by the time she was already 20, she was able to control the direction of the wind. She could direct or better still redirect the direction of the wind from north to the south or east to the west. And most importantly, she was able to cancel all the footsteps that she had in the sand just by turning around and staring at the footsteps. Do you understand, students? Now, when you walk on the sand, you leave footsteps, right? Now, she was able to wipe her footsteps just by turning back and staring at the footsteps once and no other footsteps will be recorded from that time. Now, listen to the interesting thing that happened. When our heroine was 30 years old, in 1889 see the interesting thing that happened the french decided to send two soldiers to come into africa and colonize the african people in fact they went to so many different places in africa and because of their superior fire the africans gave in without a fight so many kingdoms gave in to the french until they arrived at lugu and when they arrived Saronia Mangu came out and decided that no, no white man was allowed into the land of Lugu. She said she would not allow any white man to desecrate the land. And see what happened now. Interesting things happened. Now two soldiers from the French army who were sent in to come and take over the land. Number one was Paul Voulet. And number two was Julian Shanoin. I take it again. Paul Voulet and Julien Shanoin. I know you want to spell that, right? Now, Paul is just Paul, P A U L, and Voulet is V O U L E T. You say Voulet, correct pronunciation is Voulet. Julien is J U L I E N. Yes, and then Shanoin is C H A N O I N E. So, Paul Voulet and Julien Shanoin, these were the two generals from France who were brought to capture these parts of Africa. They captured a number of territories and when they entered into Lugu they were resisted so these two generals wrote a letter to our queen Saronia Mangu asking her to surrender just like the other nations and when she responded she responded with insults called them animals with no tails in fact insulted them and insulted the whole of France and told them that if they wanted to bath in their own blood they should dare enter the land of Lugu. The ancestors were already uh, standing by to deal with them ruthlessly. Oh my God. When Paul Voulet heard this and Julian Sanoin read this, they shook with anger and decided to move straight into Lugu and attack the people. Now before they entered, the army was already standing by, led by our heroine for today. I'm talking about Saronia Mangu. She got her soldiers ready and by just looking at the army with her yellow eyes, fire started coming out of her eyes, firing from all cylinders and in all directions. The French ran like hounded dogs into their mansion. At that time, they had already built a fort outside Lugu. But the Luguian soldiers led by Saronia Mangu chased them until they entered into their fort 
locked up the place and started responding by firing missiles and also firing cannonballs. <laughs> The battle started in January 1899 at exactly 6 o'clock in the morning. By 1 o'clock, the army was already tired. In fact, the cannonballs that were fired by the French, in fact, were so terrible that Saronia Mangu decided to retreat with her army into the bush. And she asked the people to stay in the bush because they did not have any power in fact to reflect any of the bullets coming in and she alone moved out of the forest and asked the french to start firing the french fired every bullet they fired never hit the target how oh, they fired cannonballs the cannonballs never hit the target and when she opened her eyes and stared at the french fire started coming out of her red her yellow eyes my brother my sister the fort was broken down and the french now we're begging for mercy because they had met their meter. Saronia Mangu. Her territory was the only territory that was never ever conquered. The French in the war known as the Battle of Lugu. And the French also called it the Voulet Chanohin mission because it was led by Paul Voulet and of course Julian Chanohin. So they nicknamed it Voulet Chanohin mission. My brother, my sister was a terrible flop. Hey, bullets were being fired left, right, and center, yet none of them hit the target. And let me give you some statistics. Mm -mm -mm -mm. In just a few hours, from 6 o'clock in the morning, all the way down to 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the French lost a number of people. 13 people were killed on the French side. And thousands were injured. My brother, my sister, about 7,000 of them were injured. And the French had fired over 17,000 bullets. And none of the bullets hit any one of the Luguian soldiers led by Saronia Mangu. 17,000 bullets shot. Yet none of them hit the target. But the Luguian army never shot any bullets. All the bullets were coming from the yellow eyes of Saronia Mangu. <laughs> My brother, my sister, the French army was made up of 600 rifle men. They had all the superior artillery. But just as somebody said in history, and I expect you history students to know this, the white man brought his cannon to the bush. But the bush was stronger than the cannon. How many of us remember who said this in the battle between the British and the Ashanti? Oh gosh. <laughs> hear me now now when the french realized that the army was being collapsed people were dying left right and center all their rifle men was dying one after the other now the foot soldiers were left and over 10,000 of them came out to try and fight this one woman and they regretted it they were never able to see any footsteps all they saw was people slapping them left right and center without seeing hands and without seeing human beings fire was coming from behind the trees the ground was opening and swallowing them hey they had never seen this kind of thing oh gosh and what did they do the voulet chanoid mission came to an abrupt end with yet another letter from the french and also from the generals begging saronia mangu in fact, to stop the fire, and they promised that they would never ever attack that kingdom again. Today, my brother, my sister, we remember the Vule Shanawin mission, the Battle of Lugu. We remember the great Saronia Mangu, one of the greatest queens who ever lived. History does not tell us when she died. History never made mention of even when she fell sick. History does not even tell us how many children she had, whether she got married or not. But we do know 
that her people never saw her again after the battle when the whole thing was done and she got a successor to take over the throne she decided to fly into oblivion just like elisha oh my god and elijah you remember that incident my brother my sister elisha saw how elijah flew out oh my god on a chariot of fire today we remember you mommy we remember you a Hausa woman who came from the islamic faith abandoned the islamic faith and took over the african traditional religion she developed yellow eyes by the age of 20. oh she could redirect the direction of the wind by the age 20. hey she could deflect any bullet that was directed at her and she could command the ground to open and swallow people at the same time her footsteps on the sand during war she could only turn around stare at the footsteps and all the footsteps will vanish she could also mislead any army by creating footsteps that led into danger and they followed it thinking that they were the footsteps my brother my sister of some other people their enemies today we remember you mommy mommy damn referred you mommy mommy uni yaminko mommy missy uni yaminko mommy surround your mango Saronia Mangu Saronia Mangu Uninyaminko Yamrifadio In the burden of knowledge I ask you How will the story of Saronia Mangu Impact your own life In the burden of knowledge As commanded by my professor From the University of Central Missouri Black Rasta Anytime you finish any African history class, the burden of knowledge must follow. Now that you know what to do, do. Be an anio lea mini obafe, yen zunda kagani, me zaka yini, ye and papango, bukaya nun, fifia yenya, no kaina wo, banayehu, a beden, lele and jiman singa bekune, lele and jiman singa beri, it's been the african history class and today we've been speaking about that woman that history will call a witch we are speaking about that woman who history will call a sorceress we're speaking about that woman that technology could never bring down we're talking about that woman who science could not understand <laughs> Papa Mula Homeo